Kulab, a site that I have previously covered and also personally exposed the true scale of. Seemingly, or more than likely deliberately overlooked by academia, Kulab not only possesses an enormous ancient wall, which surrounds the entrance to the site, which according to academia, was seemingly placed upon the plateau of a naturally formed hill. However, after personally investigating this site myself, I found that not only had the wall constructed took unimaginable effort to build, but that the site beyond this impenetrable fortress had in fact been backfilled with earth, artificially creating the plateau that geologists, academics, and archaeologists alike long ignored and merely assumed was selected due to natural features, were in fact artificially created. However, it is clear for all to see that not only was the plateau painstakingly created to backfill to this fortress's wall, but the ingenious entrances were also the work of a people of tremendous intellect. Many of the passageways into the site allow many to enter the passages. However, as the invaders made their way along these elevations to penetrate the fortress itself, not only were they wide open to arrow fire from above from both sides, but also by design, the passageways slowly narrowed to a point where only one person at a time could actually enter the site. However, the purpose of this video is not the astonishing architectural features of the site itself, but possibly an exposure of the true creators of the site. A group of people with characteristics which may come as a shock to some and been long predicted by others. Found deep within a cave system within the site, a burial chamber at the depth of 800 meters, a burial chamber created at this location for the sole purpose of preserving these individuals' remains for as long as possible, and also to avoid the ravages tomb raiders that have been experienced over the eons by many of the other burial sites by many different cultures. There are many wooden idols that have seemingly been treated with lost technologies and have survived the climate astonishingly well. Yet, this set of mummies could expose once and for all who were responsible for this astonishing site and indeed its miraculous characteristics. Thankfully, although much of the ancient tombs had been ravaged by robbers over the years, this absence of mummies didn't deter archaeologist Warren Church who's worked for 19 years to save Los Pachudos and learn its secrets. Seemingly successfully unraveling its innermost protected secrets, and possibly coming face to face with its original builders, they were known as the Chachapoya or the Cloud People by the Incas, who by this stage had re-inhabited the ancient pre-Incan ruins which dot Peru, and due to the ingenious nature of the fortress, the tremendous efforts that went into building it, and the seemingly impenetrable nature of its design, the Cloud People seemingly survived all the way up until the Spanish invasion, only succumbing to the introduction of smallpox, which the Spanish seemingly brought with them. An intriguing characteristic of these enigmatic people is the fact that they left no written language, yet adorned their site with countless stone carvings of orchids, butterflies, and jaguars. According to Warren Church, for more than 500 years, the Chachapoya cut farm terraces and villages into these steep slopes. This burial chamber, found deep within the site, shows that not only did they display great respect for their dead, but that they were of European origin, white-skinned and blonde-haired, with Church apparently stating that the mummies are of the most beautiful past people he has ever witnessed. Were these mummies the remains of the original builders of this astonishing site? Or were they like the Incas, merely re-inhabitations, although how they got there to these Peruvian hills and controllers of Kulap itself remains a mystery. Yet white mummies of a seemingly European ancestry have been found throughout the globe. Does this suggest that the ruling force we so often postulate once existed? that many known as the Atlanteans shared their knowledge across the globe before catastrophe? Regardless of their ethnicity, we find such research by church highly admirable and such discoveries highly compelling.
We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India, a temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people? A remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides they could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which literally boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish, evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaitya Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash temple, also another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone? Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC, who ruled over almost the entire country of India, caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed all but now a foregone conclusion. A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide is now, we feel, overwhelming. Yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, Ruins with such precision, not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crowd. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle, which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created, each cave's image made from millions of points of reference, revealing for the first time in well over 2,000 years just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were a feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves. Perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, perfectly flat floors, and perfectly vertical walls. The creation of the caves was simply perfect. 
we feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet, how this was done and with what are questions which we find hugely intriguing. In 1973, Eric Anton Paul von Däniken would publish a book that would change the world. Because of this publication, Eric is thought of as the pioneering advocate of the ancient astronaut theory. He was solely responsible for bringing the ancient alien hypothesis to public attention. His book, Gold of the Gods, included extensive research regarding a lost and very ancient city buried beneath most of Ecuador. In the book, he would detail talks with a man known as Janos Juan Moritz, a figure who had managed to extensively explore the abandoned ancient underground tunnel systems. The entrance to this forgotten world is entered through the Cueva de los Teos, the Teos Cave. While exploring, Janos claimed to have stumbled across a secret passage which led to rooms filled with mounds of golden jewels and coins, and a golden sarcophagus placed within an intact ancient metallic library, containing books made from a strange metal. Janos's research suggested that the golden fortune, along with the sarcophagus and metallic library located within the artificial tunnels, had been placed there by a lost civilization with the help of extraterrestrial beings. Did Janos Juan Moritz actually stumble upon an ancient alien tomb? A tomb which had managed to survive many thousands of years without being disturbed? Not only were the claims within von Däniken's book taken seriously, they resulted in the most expensive cave exploration ever undertaken. Stan Hall from Britain commenced upon this expedition in 1976 with the goal of finding the golden artifacts and hopefully an alien corpse. The expedition included over 100 people, including experts in a variety of fields, British and Ecuadorian military personnel, a film crew, and even former astronaut and first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. The team also included eight experienced British cavers who thoroughly explored the riskier of ancient tunnel systems, successfully conducting an accurate survey of the complex, producing a detailed map of the buried city. Unfortunately, Little evidence of von Däniken's more exotic claims was found, or remained. It is always a possibility that funded tomb robbers made it there first. It took over a year for Stan Hall to organize his team, a year which experienced a flurry of public attention directed towards what can only be described as drastically consequential claims. What's more, compounding evidence of the artifact's existence unearthed from these exact cave systems has miraculously been documented in the past. Not only had some of these mythical items been recovered, the artifacts had been bought and collected by a man known as Father Crespi. Father Crespi is considered a saint by some. He was born in Milan, Italy in 1891 and died in 1982. He was a Salesian monk who dedicated his life to worship and charity. He actually lived in the small town of Cuenca in Ecuador for more than 50 years. He did not have much wealth, but what he did have, he used to help the less fortunate. He was an avid collector of what could now be classified as impossible artifacts. He would encourage those who needed money to bring him whatever items they could find within the jungles, and he would pay them for their troubles. Although some are crude forgeries, he still paid them for their efforts. Some, however, brought to him from within these cave systems collaborate the stories of Eric von Däniken. Not only did these particular artifacts collaborate the story, but they were often made from solid gold, exhibited language and visually illustrated culture of an as yet unknown but clearly highly developed ancient civilization. The collection also included several metallic books, inscribed with an exquisite unknown language. Upon Father Crespi's death, his collection was looted by unknown peoples. All artifacts of interest were replaced with obvious forgeries or simply stolen. Upon returning from their unsuccessful expedition, the lead researcher met with Janos Moritz's indigenous source, who claimed that they had investigated the wrong cave. Had the source been paid for his silence? What is interesting is the fact that the team's efforts were not entirely fruitless. Characteristics of the cave systems they explored matched that of the descriptions given by von Däniken. 
What's more, they actually unearth zoological, botanical, and archaeological features, items which are unexplainable for the geographical location, unless it was visited by a group of people capable of traveling the seas far before Columbus. What do you think of the Teos Cave's legendary golden burial chamber? Was it all a hoax? Or did somebody get there first?